Till before the internet, Nintendo had game counselors, whom you could call if you were stuck in a game and they would coach you through it. I called one in the early 90s when stuck in Zelda, goddamn second quest, fourth level was outrageous, and the cost of calling was on PAR with calling a sex line. I was a gameplay counselor at Sega during this time. It was just regular reps who did the repair line as well. If you were good at games they would let you take gameplay calls too. You could have a TV and game system in your cube. We were a regular 415 number at first then moved to 900. It was a constant busy signal and almost impossible to get through to us. I wanted to be one when I grew up. I too recently watched High Score. My dad called them once. He made a face and said they were expensive. He asked me if I was happy and did they help. I said yes, truthfully. He said then it was worth it and smiled back. Don't know why that moment stuck with me. Featured heavily in the movie The Wizard, https colon slash slash you do. B slash S6 MRWG 0 ZN 2 Y. My phone number used to be one digit off this phone line, lived in Redmond in the mid 80s, we used to get calls all the time from stuck gamers. I remember answering some of them as a 5 or 6 year old and not understanding exactly what we were talking about but trying to help in my own 6 year old way. Sierra let you send them a postcard asking for a hint. I did it after I got stuck in police quest. I needed to ask the hooker for help. The only time I thought of calling as a kid was for Castlevania 2 2 Simon's quest. I got so stuck in that game and the quest hints made no sense. Turns out they'd screwed up the localization on the game mistranslated things to the point of uselessness. My friends and I called and asked how to beat your shadow in Zelda 2. The person on the phone said, just keep attacking it my friend asked if there was any strategy, tips, etc. Keep in mind we are like 12 at the time. And they just said to keep attacking it. Yeah. That call was like $7 in 1987 money. When I was 10 finally got enough courage to call about Breath of Fire 3, it was automated and still cost 20 bucks. Till I'm so old, I live in a world where many people don't remember Nintendo Power Line. I would not have gotten through Zelda without it. I called this one time when I was stuck on a boss in Carnove. The dude literally said go get a NES advantage if you want to beat it. Only $4.99 a minute. Featured in episode 2 of High Score on Netflix, https colon slash slash www. Netflix, com slash title slash 81019087. These phone lines were the catalyst for many ass hoopings. Not cheap, lots of surprised and angry parents. I used to call them all the time, until my parents got a $340 phone bill in 1988, and then sat me down for a serious talk, because they assumed I was being groomed or molested. When I proved it to them by calling the number, the relief on their faces was palpable. The truth was, none of my friends played Solomon's Key, and the game counselors were the only ones who knew how to find the obscure, essential stuff. Gaming before the internet was crazy. Edit, a word. Damn. You tell me I have spent all that time trying to figure out stuff while I could have just call a game counselor. When I was a kid, I wrote Nintendo a letter asking them how to get past a certain part in Final Fantasy VI, which was called Final Fantasy III in the US. It involved minecarts, I think, and for some reason I couldn't understand the mechanics of what I was supposed to do. Anyway, a few weeks later I got a letter back, and they gave me step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. They didn't charge me anything, as far as I remember. Back then, you couldn't just look up a Let's Play on YouTube, or even look it up on Game FAQs. You were limited to whatever you could figure out on your own, plus your friends, and Nintendo Power. Sounds like you watched High Score on Netflix. That said my parents would never let me call them always thought I was real calling the phone sex line or Miss Cleo. The Wizard 1989, was a great movie for showcasing everything Nintendo. It was my first introduction to the concept of eSports. 
and that Super Mario Brothers. 3 reveal where they gave you the easter egg to get the advantage, pure gold. I remember calling when I was a kid. It was like calling a celebrity. Yep. I remember calling them on several occasions. Video games were expensive by the standards of those times too, and buying one to have 75% of people get stuck in exactly the same place due to unclear or crappy design was a legitimate problem in the early days. I literally just finished watching the second episode of that Netflix series that featured the game counselors. I would have watched the third episode but this big ass centipede that I saw on a window sill in my basement jumped at me rather than scurrying away super fast so I ran upstairs. My dad worked for one of these lines for a Nintendo rival when he graduated college. He said most of his calls were kids calling to tell them how much better Nintendo was. The only time I ever called them was when I was stuck on level 2 of the Lion King for SNES. They told me to just jump. It cost $5. Oh no. I'm old. Yep, I called them two times about Zelda ALTTP at 8 years old or so, how to start the boss fight in 4th dungeon in Dark World and where to find the big bomb at the end. They were fast and great. As soon as they answered the phone the second time I just said hi, it's... Where have you hidden the bomb? Like they would know what I meant right away. Getting through on a rotary phone was a pain Bexus it was always busy, so I'd keep trying by redialing as fast as I could. Had that number memorized. Man I just started watching High Score on Netflix and it goes through both these customer service lines and Nintendo Power Magazine. Sue worth the watch. 1800 USA Sega y'all. They knew me well. Can confirm, I called it exactly one time. And it was for fucking Tiny Toons Buster Busts Loose. I was a stupid super little kid and there's this level where I think you're running on rooftops or like, the tops between trains or something and you just keep running and it just stops suddenly. You can't move forward, but the backslash screen backslash pans to the right showing a now new big jump you have to make. Problem is, you do not gain control of Buster until backslash after backslash the jump is made. The screen pans and then stops, and you believe you have control, but you do not. It just makes the jump for you. And you fall short. Every. Single. Time. Backslash unless backslash you are doing the run speed dash thing and you have to make your speedy jump backslash instantly backslash before the invisible wall that Buster runs into. Basically, you start a speedy fast jump, but immediately fall back down so the screen continues to pan, but by mere fact that you were stopped backslash when the screen stopped you backslash while you mid-speed jump, then makes the jump actually happen correctly. The speedy run jump animation simply finishes, which is what is how you proceed. Called it once or twice. Biggest one for me was SMRPG, could not figure out the passcode in the sunken ship. They gave you 6 clues in game, in addition to the entry system itself providing some info, via limited letters to select from. It's found on the bed of the ocean. It has 2 vowels. It had 4 consonants. There's an S in the word. At least 2 consonants are side by side. The R comes before the L. Letter 1, MCOTP. Letter 2, OTESY. Letter 3, a R E T S. Letter 4, A T R S C. Letter 5, T E R L O. Letter 6, S T E K R. So we know immediately spot 5 has to be L, it's the only L. So either 3 or 4 has to be R, to be before it. 6 is almost definitely S, since endings of L T, L K, L R, and L E are not exactly common. Although I tried turtle as a messed up spelling of turtle. So of course I come up with corals, which seems to be perfect. Nope, wrong. It's pearls, which I don't think of, because coral seems way too perfect. On the bed of the ocean? Yep, that's where corals are. Pearls. Nope, they're inside oysters, not on the bed of the ocean. And so that's how I paid a stranger on a phone line to tell me a password for a video game. Now. I can still get the answer from talking to my phone. 
Ok Google, what is the password to the sunken ship on Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars? The password is pearls. Now that's 24 years of technology progress.